Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and today, oh by the way I'm Peter also known as Universal Head. Today I'm going to talk about a game called Core Space. It's by Battle Systems Limited. Now there are three reasons I'm going to talk to you about Core Space today. One of them, the least important reason, is that the lovely people at Battle Systems sent me all this Core Space stuff. I actually asked them for it quite a while ago and they sent me some stuff and I recently got some more expansions as well which I'm going to of course unbox on this channel. The second most important reason is they're running a new Kickstarter. It's for a new starter set. This is the original starter set. There's another starter set coming out called Firstborn. Um, and I'm encouraging you to go check it out because and here we come to the third reason. This is a fantastic game. I really love it. It's great. And that is the most important reason out of those three, because uh, I must tell you, I will not be recommending games that I don't like. I'll tell you about lots of games, but the games that I really enthuse about are the ones that stay part of my collection and I'm playing and I enjoy and I want to recommend to you. Core Space is one of those games. I played it again just the other night and it is fantastic. I love it. Now the thing about Core Space is that it's a sandbox game. It's science fiction themed. It lives in that kind of gritty sci-fi world of Firefly Serenity. Um, it's like also, you know, Star Wars with the Disney kind of rubbed off, filed off. Um, it's uh, about traders on the edge of space trying to make a living, uh, doing deals, gangs. And then uh, through it all is the threat of the Purge, where, which are this sort of robotic race. And uh, the Purge come in, where the Purge? It's a basic Purge. The Purge come in, uh, in most games, and uh, really shake things up. Because you might start a game kind of working for yourself and trying to achieve your own goals, and then you might find when the Purge show up, you've got to cooperate a bit to survive. Or you might do the opposite and just backstab your other player again. Anything can happen in Core Space. It is, as I said, a sandbox. So it gives you a huge amount of stuff to play with. Um, there are lots and lots of missions available. And you can also make up your own with all the stuff that you can get. So let me tell you more about Core Space. Now, the first thing about Core Space that sets it apart from almost every other game I have is the fantastic amount of terrain uh, that you get in the game. And it's such an immersive game. You can see by the setup here, which is for one of the missions, that you can really get lost in uh, the atmosphere of this game. The miniatures are really nice. You know, they're not um, modelers, painters miniatures. They're functional, but they're also, you know, I really like them. They've got a lot of character. They're a smaller scale. They're not that huge heroic scale that's so in fashion these days. Um, I think that's better because it goes with the terrain really well. Um, and each one has a lot of character. And I've noticed in the latest expansions, they're doing uh, resin figures as well, which are even more detailed than the plastic ones that come in the starter set. What I've done with my miniatures is removed the plastic bases um, and attached them to these clear um, plastic bases or uh, acrylic bases. And I bought a whole lot of those um, online. And the reason I've done that is because it just looks so much better. Uh, the bases don't cover up the beautiful surface uh, that you get with the game. And uh, it just looks more realistic with them running around on clear bases than these you know, big chunky bases. The surface I just mentioned is a neoprene mouse mat material mat. It's just beautiful, lots of detail as you can see. And then on top of it, you can build your environments that you play in using the ingenious system that's the basis of all battle systems terrain. And it's basically just you know, pieces of nice thick card, lovely artwork all over them, and a whole uh, lot of these little clips, little plastic clips. And these come in straight sections, T sections, intersections, even diagonal ones. And all they do is go into the slot on the side, like so, and then you attach another one like that. And doing this very simple system of attaching them, you can get these hugely complex layouts. Um, you can even, uh, with other expansions available from Battle Systems, get layouts that go up several stories. Um, they have a huge selection of sci-fi, cyberpunk, and even fantasy um, terrain in using this system. It works really well. Now, I won't deny that it takes a little bit of time to set up one of these games, as you can see. But it all packs down, fits back into the box. Um, it'll take you sort of, you know, about an hour or something to set it all up. But, as you can see, it's worth the effort because the final result looks absolutely fantastic. And the number of times I've played this game, 
uh, where you actually get down to the level of the miniatures and it just comes to life. There's really something about getting down in there and you can see that all the characters and the enemies interacting and walking through the corridors and there's advertising on the walls and scattered terrain you can hide behind and tables and chairs and crates and ah, it's fantastic really really immersive and you know that I love immersive imaginative games here on the Esoteric Order of Gamers this just epitomizes that kind of thing. So you're probably asking yourself how does it play? Well it's a tabletop miniatures game so even though you could use the grid on the um, surface of, of the floor surface, you actually use a ruler and you can move things around up to a number of inches per turn. You have a crew, um, usually of four members, and each one of these crews have these lovely little plastic dashboards. And they're like this, they're an ingenious design, and you have the little card, that uh, the trader board, that identifies your trader. You pop that in the top, like so. Um, they have different classes with different skills on them. That pops into that area there. And then you've got another area in the middle where you can place uh, weapons. And that actually shows your carry limit as well, because you can only fit so many counters in that space, which is very neat. Down the bottom you have this very easy to um, use pegs. They're nice tall pegs, so they're easy to get out and put in. And therefore, uh, your health and your skill and your ammo. So you get your crew together. Um, you put your airlock on the board from your ship and depending on the mission of course there are different mission parameters um, and different ways of winning the game but it usually involves staying alive and getting off the board and back into your ship and escaping and that can be a lot harder than it sounds. The other ingenious thing about core space uh, and something that really ramps up the tension is the hostility tracker and it's this pegboard here. Now as you go through the game, each turn you place a peg in this board and the hostility will slowly increase. Also, every time a trader is the first to actually fire a weapon during the round, they'll put the ammo peg they used from that weapon into this board, so that ups the hostility as well. As the hostility increases, there are more and more chances of uh, the purge coming onto the board. Also some more his his civilians walking around as well. As the purge threat increases, as they keep coming onto the board, of course, things get more and more dangerous. You're usually running for your ship, trying to get to it. These horrific robots are in the, in the way, trying to kill them. Firefights break out, all kinds of things. You certainly find out who your friends are and who your enemies are, and it's always a lot of fun. In addition, of course, there's an event deck. So every turn you can draw an event card, and depending on the hostility level, different things can happen to shake up the scenario. Another unique thing about core space is that if you're starting a game with new crew members, they don't have much in the way of equipment and they have to search for equipment on the board. Now you can search individual rooms, um, but the really good stuff is usually in these crates. And these lovely little 3D crates have removable lids, so you can actually put the items inside the crate. It's a lovely little tactile um, touch to the gameplay. It's really fun. When you search a crate, you actually open up the crate and you take out the weapons. And then if you've got room for them on your trader board, you can add them to your inventory. Then you can, you know, get stuff you don't want and stick it back into the crate. Close it up, put it back on the board for somebody else to have a look inside. The combat system itself is beautifully simple and straightforward. Depending on the weapon you're using, either ranged or close combat, you roll a number of dice. You always start with a blue dice, and if you have extra dice, you add red dice. You roll those, you get a number of hits, you subtract armor from the target, and uh, if you get enough hits, you kill them. You can also, if you're unlucky, roll misfires, and depending on whether you went for sort of a heavy hit in close combat, or whether you're firing with a ranged weapon, there's a chance that your weapon might break or misfire, which can lead to some tense moments. After the traders have done their actions, and there's all kinds of things they can do, they can move, they can do combat, they can search, they can reload, swap items, all kinds of stuff, um, you get to the purge phase, and this is where you check the hostility tracker, and you see which purge uh, entering the board. They can enter from a random point somewhere around the board, there's six points that they can enter from, and uh, you just never know where they're going to show up, and it can really shake up the game. And of course, the purge come in all different flavours. They start with the very basic harvesters, which are just these skinny little robots, like little terminators. And they go up to very large and very dangerous things. These ones don't come in the starter set. These are expansion ones. But you have ones like the devastators, which have a devastating ranged combat attack. And you also have the most powerful one in the starter set, which is the live one. 
The purge move and attack pretty much like the traders do. When you choose a particular purge to act, uh, it will choose a target and then you just look on this very simple AI table which gives you a sequence of the things that might happen and it usually comes down to whether they run close to someone to attack them in close combat or shoot them in range combat or move closer away. After that you have the civilian phase. Now civilians are walking around the board as well because you know this is a living breathing space station or wherever it is and the civilians uh, walk around in a random fashion uh, they have a dice that dictates what they do and they can actually come up to players and chat with them and they might join your crew or swap items with you or run or attack or anything like that. The other thing traders can do is try to persuade civilians to join their crew. So they can go up to any of the civilians wandering around and say, hey, come and join my game. So that's the basics of the game. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it flows very easily. Of course, I've done a rule summary and reference for this game, which will make it even easier and is a great reference for any icons and things you'll come across during the game. But it plays really, really well. Once you've got the starter set, I highly recommend you check out the Deluxe Rulebook. It's a lovely hardcover book that brings together the rules from the starter set and all the rules from the first wave of expansions. And it's got a full campaign in there as well. Now, the thing about the missions is you can play them as one-offs, but... Where Core Space really shines is a campaign because you can keep your crew from game to game. Um, they can get more money, they can go to the traders and buy more items and weapons, uh, they can get skills, and it's a whole character development system in a sandbox. And this is really where Core Space is at its best. There's a whole bunch of skills that characters can learn of different types, level 1, 2, and 3 on each one of those skills, and they can affect the game in all kinds of ways. And of course, everybody wants better gear and better weapons. You can even run special rescue missions if one of your players is defeated in a previous mission and you want to run back in and try and rescue them. The other thing I love about Core Space is that there's so much content and so much variety you can add to the games. There's a whole bunch of different crews you can add. Um, there's expansion sets. This one's Shootout at Zeds, which adds gangers and some more terrain. Uh, the Purge Outbreak adds these fantastic extra purge models and more terrain, there's even infested terrain, so the uh, terrain can start getting horrible alien infestations all over it. Uh, the Galactic Core adds uh, sort of the Galactic Police and Security Wardens to your games. And then recently we have Dangerous Days, which is the new big soft cover book. And this has a whole new campaign in it, which follows on from the campaign in the uh, original deluxe book. And this is where the universe gets even more dangerous. It's for a bit more experienced players, and uh, there's a lot more going on. Some of the Purge have broken away from their AI and have become rogue. Uh, there's more gangers, a bit more of a post-apocalyptic feel. Lots of amazing stuff in there and all the rules for even more expansions. So that's it, Core Space. I can't recommend it highly enough. I think it's a fantastic game. If you want to get into it, you can buy this original starter set and expansions, or you can go straight to the Kickstarter now and get the new starter set uh, which is called Firstborn. I do reckon that if you get into this game, you're going to want as much stuff as possible because uh, the variety is incredible. And I think Sandbox really sums it up. I haven't seen a game like this for a while where you can just mix and match all these components. You can do what you want and you can add in house rules and muck around with it all you want. There's a good solid basic system there for uh, creating these kind of sci-fi conflicts and it just works really well and it's a lot of fun. Something I haven't gone into, of course, is that it can play in all different ways as well. You can play it solo because all the enemies are controlled by an, a simple AI system. You can play it cooperative in the same way if you want to work together with your teammates. Or you can play it competitively. Uh, players can have different objectives, or the same objective, and try and be the crew who gets the most number of their crew members out alive. So it's incredibly flexible. It's incredibly fun. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Core Space by Battle Systems. As you can see, the terrain looks fantastic. The miniatures look fantastic. The game is great. It comes with my highest recommendation. And I'm not mucking around because they sent me free stuff. I do play it and I love it. So check out the Kickstarter. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. I'm Peter, also known as Universal Head. This is the Esoteric Order of Gamers. There are 355 or more rules summaries and reference sheets, all professionally designed. Uh, available for free at the website. There are hundreds of videos on this channel to watch, so I do recommend you subscribe to this channel and click all notifications. Um, I'm on Twitter quite a lot, 
I also update things on Facebook and on my own Patreon page. Talking about Patreon, I've got a Patreon page at patreon.com slash esoteric order. I do everything on the esoteric order of gamers. It's a lot of hard work, takes a lot of time, so uh, and there are bills to pay. So I really appreciate it, really appreciate it if you are generous enough to go along to that page and sling me a few bucks so I can keep churning out stuff for you as I have done for the last more than eight years now. I will see you next time. Take care, please stay safe, and good gaming. Bye for now.